Hey guys, welcome back to 365 Prep. We're at Elk Shape HQ, and this is our series that we're bringing to you every two weeks to talk about where is Dan in season prep? What's he doing to push the hunting needle his direction? Yeah, so this time of year, I really don't know where I'm gonna get an elk tag at. I mean... I'm hoping that I'm drawing tags and then I'm, once I find that out, then I'm pivoting towards, okay, where am I going to go over the counter? Things like that. Different weird seasons. Do they have, does this state have a late archery? Does this state have a muzzle loader that I can use archery? I'm an archery guy. I don't use guns. I got nothing against them, but I'm just an archery guy. So I'm always kind of like, where are we at now? We got New Mexico so deadline. We're, we're planning seasons. Yeah, so just a real quick, at the time of this video, in case you watch it when it drops, New Mexico's deadline drops. And then... Where are you at on New Mexico? I on haven't a, applied yet, on honestly. A scale of, of love to, to hate versus Western states to apply in New Mexico. Oh, well, I'd like to lie to you guys, honestly. <laughs> uh, there's no bonus point system. It's a must apply state. I don't think that's a secret. And if you didn't know that, you should put in. They don't require you to have any point system, no preference or bonus. Everyone's got the same chance. And uh, the only downfall is they are gonna take your money up front, but they don't hold on to it for very long. New Mexico is a must apply state. They have like 35,000 elk, but what they do with them is they're pretty good about being stingy with their tags and their management. Uh, those elk don't have, um, you know, harsh winners. There's not the wolves like we have here. They have those Mexican wolves. But like, honestly, New Mexico is a weird state because I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think like half the tags allocated are landowner. So to get one of those non-landowner tags, those are the tags that you can draw, it's competitive. But anyone can get one. Yeah. I was lucky enough last year, third year elk hunter, drew a premium New Mexico tag. And just like a little pro tip here is you should definitely structure your first draw is what's the best unit you would like to hunt? Swing like, for the fences on the first one. Swing for the fences, tear it down. That's a good strategy. I drew a premium tag. It would cost a person like six to nine thousand dollars to buy a landowner tag. I was mm -hmm. I spent seven hundred fifty bucks and yeah. I had the best hunt, best hunt to date for me. Yeah, your first archery bull. First archery bull. And my first archery bull was in New Mexico. Word. Yeah. So that was a long, long, long time ago. Uh, other states coming up would be uh, Colorado, which we'll talk about in a second. We got. Uh, Nevada, uh, Montana, you know, there's there's some things going right now. So you need to really kind of take a peek. Arizona draw results are happening now as far as credit cards are getting hit. Mine has not been hit yet. I'm hoping they're not done <laughs> tapping credit cards. For Colorado, I did a podcast with Garth Jensen of Hunt and Fool. I've never, we've dissect Colorado like no one else has ever done. And since Colorado is such a good destination for East Coast, Midwest guys to hunt because they have so much over the counter. It's that first stop. You drive across the Mississippi, what do you hit? And they have the most just elk out of any state. So yeah, we big. we cut that apart. You have, that's a must listen. So if you've never checked out the Elk Shape podcast, find that one. It'll be dropping soon. Yeah, guys. And we're definitely not your best resource to plan out all these things. We just want to keep you in the loop as to what to look for. But there are a couple great resources. Sure. Show them about them. Obviously, gohunt.com. Hashtag got to, pay, got to pay to play, but not sponsored. It's worth it. Uh, Hunt and Fool is another good one. It's like kind of like Go Hunt, but like more or less, uh, they have hunt advisors that are included in your membership, and you get an actual publication, online resources, and mapping. So, to me, I think they're kind of stepping their game up. I think a lot There's of people a little more support around that system. Basically, they're going to help you more. Go Hunt's more for the DIY guy. Yeah, and so both are good, and there's others, and neither one of them sponsor a thing we do. We don't ask for that, but they're awesome, great resources. And then Google Earth. So this time of year, I haven't really geeked out too much on Google Earth yet. Um, I've I've snooped around looking at different units, but at this point, I'm looking at draw odds. I'm looking at where most people apply, what gets overlooked, and how can I get a tag for somewhere besides my home state of Washington. As far as um, what's what's elk shape up to. I'm messing with... Yeah, what's going on at HQ, man? We're messing with arrows, so I got some uh, full metal jackets right here. I usually use These the... look sexy. Yeah. So we're teaming up with AAE, and we're going to do like a custom oak shape vein. Um, and you guys are the first to know that. We don't have them yet. They'll be for sale on the website. 
but I've been a boning guy for a long time. And once I did a podcast with Nick Fisher, one of the owners of AAE, he totally sold me on these Max Stealth. Uh, even Josh Jones, my archery coach, was like, oh, good, you, you decided to finally grow up. That's great. <laughs> so he's been telling me to get these, and I've been really impressed. So I think these are 2.6 inches. I've been running just a three-degree offset. And I'm a huge advocate of building your own bullets and building several different variances and figuring out what's gonna fly best out of your rig. And I'm not an expert. I don't geek out and, and do front of center and have it at 13 to 15%. But here's what I do do. I build bullets and try them all. So right now I have uh, Axis 340 match grade with 75 grains up front. I don't have any on me here. And then I got those max stills and a three degree offset and they're flying great with broadheads, without. I got a couple dozen of FMJs. This is my all-time favorite arrow for elk. When I switched to Matthews, I had FMJs and I thought they were just kinda slow and my sight tape was just kinda long, so I compromised to the axis. But with this new VX, VXR, it's spitting them out pretty fast. I'm probably gonna do a batch of FMJs and see about coming back to these for elk specifically. And I think the moral of that story too is you're figuring out what works for your setup, right? You change setups, so you're figuring out what's the best, what's the best rig for your setup. Definitely, and then I am ordering a 28 inch VXR right-handed to do another bow build with, because one, I need the practice, two, Matthews will oblige, um, which is awesome. I know that's a big deal. And then I have the left-handed Saga, which um, I don't know at the time of this, have we are we gonna release that video soon? Okay, so we have a left-handed Saga video. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. And if it hasn't been published yet, check it out when it goes live. It's coming. It's coming, but basically I kind of touch on my process of left-handed. It's a pretty cool video because it's just straight up bringing you along the journey of all the things I'm doing. But the bottom line is, I'm, I'm decided that I'm gonna be a switch hitter when it comes to archery only. And what that means is um, I wanna be proficient both ways. And if one starts really shining, I'm gonna go with that. But so right now, um, right-handed is dominant. It's, it's working really well. We're gonna to shoot today right-handed, uh, but I will put arrows through my left-handed VXR every day. And I can tell you, Tim, I get a little bit more comfortable every time I, you know, shoot and... Yeah, so give me the overview on that process. Like the first time you shot left-handed to today, yeah. what's that feel like? So when I built a left-handed bow, are you? I know how dominant I am in my left eye. So I was like, I'm gonna shoot lights out. And then when I got it all set up and it came to shooting, I did not realize it for a couple minutes, but my right eye was aiming and my left eye wasn't even invited to the party, even though both eyes were open. So I started shooting way off to the right, called my archery coach and he told me to get a pirate patch. And I said, no, I'm gonna do that. But I ended up getting an eye shield and it just, it doesn't, it blocks your right eye from seeing. It just blurs your right, but you can keep both eyes open. And my left eye is, is a lot stronger. As far as holding the bow with my good, my right arm, it's good for a little while, but I get, fatigued fast. I mean like 10 arrows and I'm fatigued, especially if I'm shooting like a back tension or a hinge. I'm, I'm holding forever and I'm just getting shaky and the, the pin's floating, but I'm stacking arrows pretty good. It's getting more and more comfortable. I'm just worried about in the heat of the moment, if a bull's coming down a trail, drooling, ready to die, and I'm like trying to stumble with my left arm, like I just, I don't want to squander any opportunities because they're few and far between when hunting. So we'll see. Well, you'll, you'll, you'll never know until you get in that situation, but definitely to speak to like your archery coach, he, in my opinion, sees a higher upside. So that's why he's pushing you towards that. He's like, there's a higher upside lefty because you can shoot with both eyes open. I've always been right-handed. I've always shot right eye dominant. I've always shot right-handed, but I used to shoot with one eye. I opened up the second eye and it's a really, it's really a blessing to watch that arrow fly as far as efficacy when you're shooting. And then uh, some people want to do this and look to see where their arrow flew. You remove that variable by, by keeping both eyes open. No, oh, definitely. I think having a mentor like Josh Jones of SVA has been huge for me. He's done so much for me and I can't, I, I'm always surprised every time I talk to him how much he's forgotten. He's forgotten more than I'll ever know. He's just been a student of life. And that's cool to have someone. And if you don't, we're trying to be that somebody for you guys. There's real, like John Dudley does a great job showing what he does. 
Inside Out Archery, the guys from Wayne Endicott Shop, uh, the Bow Rack. Mm -hmm. They got a great YouTube channel. They do a good job. And so it's not just about elk shape. Like we're here to show you guys there's other great resources out there. We just are here to keep it real. And hopefully give you guys a little motivation, inspiration, and push the right direction. Certainly, I, I'm nowhere near archery, anything expert. Dan's got a lot of reps in and a lot of time behind his bow, so you can learn a lot from him, but still not coaches. No, no, know your role, stay in your lane. We're just guys that try hard, and uh, hopefully you are too. We got to do the giveaway. James McArthur, the man who won the elk shape hat. Thank you. We got to 11K followers. Wanted to say thank you by giving away a hat and supporting the positive community that is elk shape. So James McArthur came on. James, uh, reach out to us, elkshape at gmail.com. And he said, I missed the first 50 comments, but I love the content. Keep it coming. Well, the deal was, James, you didn't miss the first 50 comments because we were commenting with you this community. So thank you for being here. We're going to send you some swag. Just yeah. reach out via email. We need your address, bro. And all of you, man, like post some maybe in your comments. Let us know your Instagram handle, whatever, so we can give you guys shout outs here and grow this community. Grow your own following as well and, and just get everybody excited about 365 prep. Yeah, be positive. Work hard. We'd love to share that story.